Good morning, brethren of the Holy Joy Church Incorporated UAE and all its branches across the United Arab Emirates, all Berea pastors, ministers, pastors in training, Berea students of Berea Academy Middle East and Berea Academy Malaysia. So today is the second Sabbath of the month of May. And for today, our theme is the first judgment and the second judgment. So let us pray. Father God, thank you, Father, that today you have always been with us. Thank you, Father, that last night during our nightly prayers for the coronavirus concerns, you have been present. And thank you that you give us divine visitation. I pray that those who have been watching every night our nightly prayers, even in all our preachings and Bible studies in different days every week, you are always there. Your presence is there. I pray, Father God, that in the mighty name, Yeshua HaMaseya, you will anoint my lips today so that only the words you want me to speak will I speak to your people. I declare and I decree that there will be no demonic contamination on all members of the Holy Joy Church Incorporated UAE and all its branches and that we thank you that until today you have shielded each one of us none even our frontliners in the hospitals have been shielded from the infection of the coronavirus you are indeed God you are faithful when you say that you will protect us and you will never leave us wherever we go, whatever we do. I pray that today as I speak about the return of Christ, you will support me with the Ruach HaKodesh Elohim, that the Ruach HaKodesh Elohim will manifest in each one's heart listening and watching this video for your glory and for your kingdom. In the mighty name, Yeshua Hamaseya, I pray. Amen. So the return of Christ. Let us open our Bible and read Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. The glorious return. Verse 29 but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 30, And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds on the sky with power and great glory. Verse 31, And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. Introduction our God is a God of order. He is a God of mercy, a God of long-suffering, and a God of perseverance. He has been waiting for our return. Though we have been unrepentant of our wicked ways, God has never given us up until we have divine encounter with his son Yeshua Hamaseya who has brought us back to him 
the Bible says, Yeshua HaMasiah will come back after the tribulation or at the end of the seven-year period, which is prophesied by Prophet Daniel and spoken in the Revelation. But when He comes, He reigns for the Millennium Kingdom before, the judge, before He judges the world, the devil, and the people. Amen? So, first point, confess one's faith. God desires all His people to understand the truth of God's judgments. Understanding God's judgments will enable the believers to prepare for Yeshua HaMasiah's second coming and for the unbelievers to return to God. Before Yeshua HaMasiah will come for the second time, there are six signs that all of us will experience. These signs are the deception by a false Christ, the disputes and wars among the nations, the devastation throughout the world, believers are brought to tribulation, false believers, and the gospel to be preached throughout the world. So these six will come to pass one after the other or they may come simultaneously while waiting for the Lord to appear in the mid heavens. Matthew 24 verses 13 to 14. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. Amen. So we go through these long years of trying times. Everyone must confess his faith. Without confessing one's faith, no one can enter the kingdom of God. The people's faith will be tested. In this end time, true faith in the Lord Yeshua HaMasiah will be tested. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you until indeed you fail the test. Many are mistaken in believing that our God will fulfill all His promises to save us. Why? Why are they mistaken? Because God is faithful of His promises. But, we are not. I repeat, we are not. We are unfaithful. We do not pray. We do not read His Holy Word. And most of all, we do not obey the Word of God. John 3.36 He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life but the wrath of God abides on him. Very clearly, God says so. True faith in the one and only true God is the only one that can save us. When we speak of true faith, it is obeying God, humbling before God, and being faithful to Him. Without doing all this, our faith is dying. Without doing this, our faith is dying. That's why James says, faith without works is dead. James 2.26, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Amen? 
when we believe God's promises to save us will be certainly fulfilled, then we need to obey Him without fail. We have to be faithful to Him and be humble to confess to Him all our sins. Most Christians believe in Yeshua HaMasiah without obedience. I will repeat, most Christians believe in Yeshua HaMasiah without obedience. They are just taking lightly the commandments of God. However, taking lightly the commandments of God is in the original Hebrew Bible text carries two meanings. Kulala and me ira. God is saying in His holy word that if you kulal, kulala me or take Him lightly or His word and do not obey, He will me ira you. Me ira means destruction. Therefore, God will destroy you. It is a simple curse. It is not a simple curse. For instance, when God says in His word, I will curse you because you robbed me of my tithe and offering. The curse in the Hebrew original word means to destroy. It is not a simple curse. It is to destroy. How can we then claim that His promises will be fulfilled without obedience to His word? How can we say that Yeshua HaMasiah will give us eternal life when we receive Him, when eternal life comes and will be given as a reward upon His return? It means that the eternal life is a promise. While we are still alive, it will only be given to us as a reward when we already join Yeshua HaMasiah in the New Jerusalem. That's why we have to run the race. If you remember and you have read your Bible, the Holy Word of God says that Paul says and declares, I run the race and I run it well. We have to run the race well enough for us to reach the new Jerusalem. Anyone who will only bank in on his promises without doing anything to receive it, you are only believing in a false hope because it will not come unless we run the race and run it well. So, in the fit life of many Christians, they find no rest but just problems up after problems. The reason is they claim they have faith but do not obey God. Second point, the glorious return. In my previous preaching last week, I said that when Yeshua HaMasiah returns, the dead in Christ will be resurrected first. Then, those who are alive in Christ will be transformed into incorruptible body of spirit and of soul when they hear the trumpet call of the angels. In other words, this is what we call rapture. It means that at the trumpet call, the flesh of those who are alive in Christ will drop off to the ground as dust and their soul and spirit will join together to form a new incorruptible body who will meet the Lord Yeshua HaMasiah in the mid heavens. This divine scenario will happen after the tribulation. The rapture will occur when Yeshua HaMasiah will appear in mid-heavens after the tribulation, not before. 
because a lot of people believe that the rapture will be pre-tribulation. No, it is post-tribulation. When the Messiah appears in the mid heavens, then his angels will gather all dead and alive in Christ from all corners of the world. I repeat, when the, the Messiah appears in the mid heavens, then his angels will gather all dead and alive in Christ from all corners of the world therefore those who are dead we, who are not who are unbelievers they will not resurrect during the first resurrection and all those who are wicked and are still alive they will continue to experience difficulties while waiting for the Lord to stand in His throne of judgment. Matthew 24, verses 29-31, these are the two verses that we read as our scriptural verse in this message. 29, but immediately after the tribulation, of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 30, And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Verse 31, And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Amen. We should also remember, that before Yeshua HaMasiah appears in the mid-heavens, the heavenly bodies, sun, moon, and stars will stop giving their light and they will be darkened and even the stars would fall. This is because the King of Glory who will come again to reign and to judge is the light and life. His glory and light will cover the entire heavens, in fact, the entire universe, that there is no more need for a created light. Because the sun, the moon, and the stars are all created light by God. But now will come that the created one, but the creator, the one who created heaven and earth and all that are on them. Amen? Mark 13, verse 24, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will give its light. Amen? Third, the Christ will reign. Third point, the Christ will reign. Christ in Hebrew is Ha ma -seya. Ha means God. Masiya means the Messiah. The Messiah God, the one anointed by God to save. It refers, Hamasaya refers to the office of Yeshua. It is not his family name. If we think that Yeshua is his first name, and Hamasaya is his last name, we are wrong because only Yeshua is his name and Hamasaya is the name of his office. Amen? Yeshua or Yahushua is the original Hebrew birth name of the Son of God, which means salvation. But the redeemed Jews 
who are born again Jews prefer to call him Yeshua because Yahushua also means Joshua. So to avoid complication, confusion, they prefer to call the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. Although to call him Yahushua is still the same. It still means salvation. Amen? In my preaching last week about the Millennium Kingdom, I said that upon His return, the Lord Yeshua HaMaseya will first reign for a thousand years with the saints who have been resurrected. So, it must be very clear that when He returns, the first thing that will happen is the dead in Christ will resurrect, followed by the resurrection or the rapture of the saints, the living saints, and then there the Yeshua, the Messiah, will reign together with the saints and those who resurrect during the first resurrection. I also said, that the rest of the dead will not be raised until the end of the millennium kingdom. Revelation 20 verse 5, The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Amen? Based on the seven-year period of tribulation, Revelation 11, as revealed by God to John the Beloved, the first three and a half years will see the two witnesses of God prophesying and having its powers against the darkness. I repeat, seven years of tribulation, but Revelation 11 is specifically mentioned that the first three and a half years will be the time when the two witnesses of God will prophesy and will demonstrate its powers against the darkness. But Daniel earlier prophesied in Daniel 7.25 and Daniel 12 verse 7, that the last three and a half years of the seven-year period is the reign of the beast or the Antichrist. So, let us look at a seven-year period. The three and a half, first three and a half years period, will be for the two witnesses of God. But in the middle, at the end of the three and a half years of prophesying and performing signs and wonders for God, the two witnesses will be destroyed and they will be killed by the Antichrist because the Antichrist or the false Christ will now arise. And so the remaining three and a half years of the seven year period is the evil reign of the Antichrist. Amen. But we can see that it is clear that at the middle of the seven years, the body of Christ or the temple of God will be desecrated. We know that we are the temple of God. So these prophecies of Daniel 7.25, Daniel 12.7 refer to the desecration or destruction of the people of God. And the Antichrist will reign 
only for the remaining three and a half years. Then Yeshua HaMasiah will come back to judge and reign. So, from these prophecies, we know that only at the end of the evil reign of the Antichrist for three and a half years that Yeshua, the Messiah, will come. He will not come during the first three and a half years. Amen? Daniel 12 verse 7, I heard the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river. As he raised his right hand and his left toward heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. And as soon as they finish shattering the power of the holy people, all these events will be completed. May I remind you that in biblical prophecy, the time, times, and half a time is three and a half years. The time means one year, times means two years, and half a time is half year. Therefore, the total reign, evil reign of the Antichrist or the beast is total three and a half years. Very clear. Because... Matthew 24, 36 says that only God the Father knows about the exact day and time. Not even the Son and the angels, we as children of God need to be ready for His return. Amen? We have to be ready because although we know that at the end of the three and a half years of the reign of the Antichrist, the Messiah will come, but we don't know the exact day and time. Therefore, we have to be ready. Matthew 24, verse 44. For this season, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think He will. So, the Holy Bible does not lack any Warning, it has already warned even before Jesus died that we have to be ready because the hour when he finally appears in the mid heavens, no one ever knows. Amen. Fourth point judgment of God. The Bible says. That, we, that when man sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, all of mankind was in the loins of Adam, so that his sins became the inherited sin of all human race. Because the entire mankind was in the loins of Adam when he committed sin against God. Amen? So God knows that man was in despair after Adam and Eve sinned against God. Man was in despair because he was bound to the hell fire. In other words, there is no way for man to go except to hell fire. So God made a diagnosis of man's sin and sent the prophets of God to preach the message of hope, proclaiming the coming of the Messiah to destroy the devil's works and its end result will be the gift of salvation to man. So this is it. This is the well-designed salvation plan of God so that our God's death on the cross is not in vain. His blood has ransomed us from the devil's slavery of man and through the cross we have become free from the devil's works. 
Not all, however, have received Yeshua Hamasaya as their Lord and Savior despite all His sacrifices. Hence, God's first judgment is for man to be condemned as sinners on the account of Adam's sins. I will repeat. Hence, God's first judgment is for man to be condemned as sinners on the account of Adam's sin. So those who do not believe in the Son of God already stand condemned. John chapter 3 verse 18, He who believes in Him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen? The final judgment of God will be after the last rebellion of the devil. This is when the devil will be released from the 1,000 years of being bound in the abyss and padlocked by the angel. Once he is released, he would gather all his agents, all those who live in darkness, and they will, wa they will wage a war against the people of God. And we die only once, and then judgment. Hebrews 9 verse 27, And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. Yeshua Hamaseya is the judge. The dead will come before God to be judged. Revelation 20 verse 12, And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Why books? Because there is the book of life, and there is also the book of remembrance that all we are doing on earth will be recorded in the book of remembrance, and all these books are held by individual angels just near the throne at the right hand of the Father in His white throne room. Amen? Books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Amen? The second judgment is to be thrown into the hell fire. Revelation 20 verses 14 to 15, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Verse 15, and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Amen. I will give you a very vivid testimony. On the 17th of December, 2006, I was studying at the Dunamis International School of Missions to Asia, the King's Way from the United States came and selected five graduating students of the Dunamis International School for Missions in Asia. I was one of those selected to join in the crusade, evangelical crusade in Mountain Province. They based their selection on what we put in our application. Because when you apply in Dunamis, the form there, there is a question. 
do you know whether Holy Spirit resides in you? And if you answer yes, the following uh, vacant spaces, you have to specifically mention a specific experiences where you have experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. The third question would be about you have to name all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been granted to you. So based on these three items, they selected five people and I was one of them. But what happened? We conducted the evangelical crusade in Bunto for five days. And after, after we finished the five days, we also brought doctors because before we started the crusade in the morning, the doctors will examine those who are sick. So, each one is given the paper. But those of us, including the pastors with us, who have the gift of healing, the doctors will not heal. They will ask them to go to the pastors and to the graduating students of Dunamis for us to lay hands on them. One by one. Therefore, it was a very fulfilling, a very fulfilling crusade. Because my first experience was there was an old woman, and it was difficult to speak to them because they were speaking different language. They could not. Understand the Ilocano, we have an Ilocano pastor and even the Ilocano pastor could not understand what he was talking. Maybe an Ifugao language something. Difficult. So, we were blessed because there was a teacher teaching in the school who could speak English and who could also speak in the language of the people in that place. So this woman came to me and I asked this lady by the name of Fe to tell her, ask her what she was, uh, what, what she was complaining of, what was the sickness and how was she uh, felt at the time. And so this Fe told me, at the age of seven years old, she was carrying a big bunch of firewood on her head. But while negotiating along the way down the mountain slope, she fell. And so there was a stump there of the tree which was, um, uh, it, it, it uh, hit her ears so from the time on she became deaf so I prayed about her deafness what happened after maybe five seconds I was not finished praying for her she started jumping and she was um, she was laughing that I could not understand so I asked Faye again what did this old woman saying and she said she told you that she could now now hear because she could hear your prayers praise god this woman old woman age 72 who became deaf since a young age now she could hear exactly the prayers that i have not I had not even finished praying on her while laying my hands on her. After the fifth day, we have decided there were five of us from the school, 
for from the Kingsway, Kingsway International of the U.S. Uh, pastors. So all fa nine of us, I said we have to thank the Lord for a very uh, victorious mission. While we were praying, I'm telling you now, and I do not know whether you will believe me or not. While we were praying, holding our hands, I suddenly saw myself. It was not the man, uh, Pastor Robert, holding my hand, but it was Jesus. And wa I was up there in the air. And they were all, uh, they were all left. On the ground, and the next thing in a in a um, in a second, they disappeared from my view. And what I saw was exactly what I was telling you: the lake of fire, which will be our second death. Because the second death is not a physical death; it is the death of our spirit. When we could not receive Jesus or Yeshua HaMasaya be before we die. We will be being chained. So I saw people, they were chained with a chain as only very short. So when they were walking, they could not walk properly because the chain is chaining one after the other. But the most important thing that I would say is, I saw my father. My father died before I became born again. We are eight brethren, brothers, two brothers, six sisters, eight in all. I was the last to become born again. Because I held on to Islam. So, when my father died, I was not born again. But my, our youngest sister was already born again. But because her pastor did not tell her to evangelize to the family members, specifically to my father who was already sick, of prostate cancer at the time, my father died without receiving Jesus. And here, I saw him walking. Even all the people who was with him in one row, because I saw flashes. Like for example, your family name is Diaz. You will see Diaz, Diaz flashing. So you will know these people walking towards the lake of fire, which is so huge, and the flame was so hot. They belong to the Diaz family. So I know my family name. I look at the family name, and so I saw my father walking together with his father and his mother, because at the time, my grandparents already died. So, I cried and I looked at Jesus and I said, Lord, give me five minutes. I want to evangelize my father. But you know what the Lord told me? I'm sorry, my child. His time is already finished. He is already judged. That's why it says, and I repeat, it says, what I read that we die in Hebrews 9.27. We, and is in as much as it is appointed for men to die once. And after this comes judgment. Judgment is already written by the angel. As I could hear the Lord talking to me. That he died. There was not judgment yet. But. His judgment is already done. The judgment will only be read on the day of the judgment. So what the Lord was showing to me was a future event that would tell me or show to me that this will the end 
of those people who did not know me. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you made me a missionary. And yet, even to my own father, I could not bring him to you. And he said, I'm very sorry. The time is already up. So I started crying and crying. And the Lord pointed his finger because they were walking from this uh, right side. He said, those are the ones I want you to bring to me. And all these people who are there, they are still alive, but they are also uh, walking with a chain because they have not received Jesus. And he told me, these are the souls I want you to bring to my feet. And from there, I saw an elevated area where all the born again, they were singing, including my, my mother and all members of my family. They were all singing with the angels. So, and then the entire vision disappeared. I could not forget. I told you there are eight of us, but I am the closest to my father, meaning I am a father's daughter. Because every time there, there was a vacation, all my brothers and sisters would go with my mother to a vacation. I would stay with my father. And that we would be going to the tenants. We would go to the tenants. And my father would tell me, at, at a very young age, I know how to type. No one taught me, but I typed, starting with small, very slow. I was the one preparing for all the contracts with our tenants. So I would go. So I know who belongs to this area, who is the tenant here and there. So I was always with my father. So it was very difficult for me to accept that my very own father could not receive Jesus. And there was no more time for him to receive because his time was already finished. I am talking to you. This is a true testimony so that you could think that if you have not shared the gospel to your family members, you, you, these things that I experienced would also happen to you because I saw it with my own eyes. Amen? Amen. When we die, we cannot feel pain anymore. Because our body has been separated from our soul and spirit. I explain for those who are new that our self is made of body, spirit inside, and also the soul inside. So we are made of body, soul, and spirit. So when someone hit us or struck us with a sharp knife, we would feel the pain because it will be in our body. But once we die, our body goes back to dust. What becomes our body will be the spirit and the soul. We can no longer feel the pain. Yet, and remember this, when God will judge the wicked and the sinful, people who die without knowing Jesus, and the judgment day comes, again, God will put back all their senses so that their soul will suffer the burning sulfur in the lake of fire and the worms do not die in there. So, these worms that do not die, they would enter into our noses, our mouth when we uh, start screaming, enter into our 
our ears and all the openings of our body. And it will not die even though you are in the flames. So, for the temporal worldly pleasures, Bishop, gusto ko pa kasing mag kanta ng karaoke. Gusto ko pang mag-inom. Anyway, I'm still 25. Long way to go. No. When death comes, it will not select the old. Whether you are young or old, whether you are rich or poor, death will come according to the divine timing of God. Therefore, for the temporal worldly pleasures, the sinful soul of a man will experience the eternal unquenchable fire in the lake of fire. Bakit siya sinasabing lake of fire? Sa nakita ko, ang flame would be like a would look like a tongue. Because once someone who was walking towards the lake of fire reaches the edge of the lake of fire, the fire will like a tongue. It will hold the feet and then the chain would be cut and then that that soul would be thrown into the lake of fire and rather next and then next and next. It would be like that as I saw it with my own eyes. Amen? Only those who are with Christ can enter in the new Jerusalem, the dwelling place of God, which will come down from heaven. I repeat, only those who are with Christ can enter in the new Jerusalem. Where will the new Jerusalem come? It will come down from heaven because the new Jerusalem is the dwelling place of God. There, they will live with Christ, the Emmanuel, which means God with us. Brothers and sisters, the name Emmanuel, which Isaiah, prophet Isaiah revealed before 762 years before Jesus or Yeshua HaMasiah was born, will be the new name of Yeshua HaMasiah for those who will overcome as they live in the new Jerusalem. I will repeat to avoid confusion. The souls or the saints who are with Christ will live with Christ forever in the new Jerusalem that, as I said, will come down from heaven because the new Jerusalem is the dwelling place of God, the heavenly dwelling place of God. The Emmanuel. We will be living with the Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. This is the time when we will be with God. Emmanuel will be the new name of Yeshua HaMasiah for those who will overcome as they live in the new Jerusalem. Hala ka Bishop, saan mo man nakuha yan? Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 and listen please, listen properly. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. Referring to God the Father. And, ano pang ibigay niya? My new name. Amen? Never forget Revelation 3.12. He says, I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name, which I, re I said is Emmanuel or God with us. Amen? Last one, 
or the fifth point, time to save your soul. The time to save our soul is now. As we can see in the case of my father, I can no longer even five minutes preach to him. And you know that this, it, this scenario became very, it was terrible that I could not forget what I saw. For seven months, I would wake up in the evening, I would cry because I could still see the, the, the pain in the face of my father very clearly as he was walking toward the lake of fire. While we are still alive, we have the opportunity to seek for God's forgiveness. While we are still alive, we have to seek for God's forgiveness. But once we die, there is no more chance. So while we are alive, we must love our soul. We must love our soul. You cannot love our body, but people love their body they want to buy very expensive clothes like they want to uh, appear like a princess especially during parties they will put the most expensive jewelry on their body they love their body but they have forgotten their soul it is not the body that we should love but our soul we have to love our soul we must always remember that when our body is happy our soul is distressed. All the things that we have enjoyed on earth, physically, it gives happiness to us, to our body. But we do not know. Our soul is distressed because our soul wants to go back to God. But what we are doing on earth is something that will even bring him to Satan, not to the God that our soul wants to be with for eternity. Amen? Romans chapter 2 verse 5, But because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Amen? Today, and no other day. This is today. No other day is left for us to receive and accept Yeshua HaMasiah as our Lord and Savior. If you are interested to find peace, seek the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. His name is Yeshua HaMasiah, translated into English as Jesus Christ. Anyone whose heart is ready to receive Yeshua HaMasiah and to confess with his mouth that he is Lord and Savior, please follow me as I pray for you. The sinner's prayer. So let us pray. I invite those who are watching as I preach. If your heart is now ready to receive the Lord, please follow this sinner's prayer. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, I am grateful for your loving kindness and steadfast love for me. Thank you for your only begotten Son who died for us to give us eternal life. Lord Yeshua Hamasaya, our Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for taking lightly your holy word. Help me to forgive others who have hurt me. Come and enter into my heart. I receive you and accept you as my Lord, Savior, Master, and God. Write my name, Lord Yeshua, in the book of life so that I will be with you 
in the new Jerusalem on the day of judgment. Amen, amen, and amen. So let us pray. Father God, your words has come out. Let the Holy Spirit, O Lord God, Yeshua HaMasaya, to touch the heart of those who are watching and have heard your word, so that they will also become your children like me. I pray, O Lord God, that those who have received and accepted you today at this very moment, send the Holy Spirit to them so that the Holy Spirit will direct them, will teach them the right things to do so that they can obey you, they can humble themselves before you, and they will be faithful in praying and always worshiping you as their Lord, Savior, Master, and God. Lord, Yeshua HaMaseya, cover us all with your precious blood that your blood will shield us from any attacks of the enemy, Satan, the devil, the old serpent, especially to shield us from the coronavirus that the devil is spreading in all 205 countries across the world. Thank you, Lord. We love you. And we will always say, we bless your name. We always bless your name. And I pray peace to Israel and to your people. Peace to us, O Lord God. In the mighty name of our living Yah, Yeshua HaMaseya, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>